Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes. So I wanted to jump on here and share a passage of scripture that has encouraged me a lot, especially during this past week. And so I'm sharing it with you, hoping that whatever you're faced with, whatever you're going through today, or whatever you might have gone through yesterday or last week, um, that's still plaguing you, or whatever it is that you will encounter this week, that you will be encouraged. So I found myself in a shaky position last week, just say last week. And in that position, I found myself saying to God, you know, God, if it is possible, take this cup from me. But at the end of the day, let your will be done. So although I would prefer to not have to go through this, I also want you to allow me to be processed so that whatever it is in me that needs to be refined or whatever it is that I need to be prepared for, that I will be adequately prepared for. And so I kept saying, you know, God, if it be possible, take this cup from me. If it be possible, take this cup from me. And I'm like, okay, I need to go look for that scripture. And so when I found it, it was in the book of St. Matthew chapter 26. And in that in that passage of scripture, it's where um, Jesus was speaking about the Passover and he was also um, speaking about the fact that he was going to be betrayed, etc. And, you know, with everything that he would have been telling the people and his disciples and the questions that they would have posed to him that he had to answer, he became sorrowful, right? He became extremely sorrowful. And I can only imagine how he felt because it was a lot for one person to have to go through. And so even in verse 36, it says, Then cometh Jesus with them. And as a matter of fact, if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. So this will be your devotions. Turn with me to St. Matthew chapter 26. If you don't have a Bible, then go to the Google Play Store and you can download a Bible app for free on your phone or your tablet or your computer. Okay, all right? So let's get that done. So get your Bible, get your Bible app. I'm going to wait for you to download the Bible app. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three two one it doesn't take that long we're still waiting okay great all right so in st matthew 26 verse 36 it reads then cometh jesus with them unto a place called gethsemane and says unto disciples sit ye here while i go and pray yonder and if many of you are familiar with you know the gospels it was always a case where after doing ministry, Jesus would go up to the hills and he would pray. I guess that's where he got his strength from. So after releasing so much virtue, praying for persons, speaking over person's life, performing miracles, etc., he would go to that place where his virtue would be restored. Right? And he said, sit here while I go and pray over yonder. And he took with him, as he went to pray, he took with him, that's verse 37, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And so even as we stop there, I want you to think about a time in your life or even if it's right now, you know, based on what we're faced with, etc. That you were very sorrowful and heavy. Right? And I want you to think about this. Jesus having performed all these miracles, Jesus having raised people from the dead, Jesus having turned water into wine, etc., was sorrowful and very heavy. And you know what he did? He didn't keep it to himself, but he shared that with persons closest to him. And I want you right now to think of at least one person, or two persons, or three persons, especially in Jesus' case, that you can trust Three persons who you know that you can rely on. Three persons whose heart and whose intentions you can trust. And find it in yourself. Find it in your heart. To find that peace where you can say, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's on my mind. This is what's bothering me. This is what's affecting my productivity. This is what's affecting my growth in this season. 
and just release it from off your chest. If Jesus could have done it, you can do it too, right? Okay, so it go, goes on and it says, then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. He felt like he was going to die. He felt like, I believe he felt like, look, this is it. I'm going through all of this. I'm not even sure what I'm going to get out of it. My soul is sorrowful, even unto death. Many of us become sorrowful to a point where we feel like giving up. We become sorrowful to a point where we say, God, you know, we ask God questions like, why am I going through this? Um, why is it me? What have I done? Etc. But in Jesus's case, it was unto death. Like he's sorrowful to the point where it felt like it was going to take his life. It was going to take his life. And I'm sure you have felt like that. I have felt like that many times. And in those times, I've been most vulnerable. And I'm like, God, why am I going through this? Look, in these times, I ask God the most questions. Why am I going through this? Why me? Why not somebody else? Why did you choose me to go through this? What have I done? Have I sinned? And God, if I have, well, forgive me. You know, but why do I need to go through all of this trial? Why do I need to go through all of this test? And, you know, he said... He told his other disciples, sit here and, you know, pray. On three occasions, he came back to the place where he asked them to pray. Now, mind you, all he asked them to do was to pray. And not even that they could have done. They were asleep. They were asleep. And I can only imagine the added sorrow that filled his heart. Knowing that he felt such grief. He felt such pain. He felt such hurt. And he asked them for a simple favor to pray. And they could not pray. And this only tells me that it doesn't matter how sorrowful you are. It doesn't matter how much in a gut or a rot you feel that like you're in. It doesn't matter how much you feel as though life has taken from you. You have a responsibility to maintain a personal relationship with God. You can't depend on anybody else to pray for you, pray over you, speak into you. You have to maintain that relationship. You have to maintain that connection. Where even in your most vulnerable spaces, even in your most weakest times, you can say, God, this is how I feel. And it's so important for us to be honest about where we're at. It's so important for us to be honest about how we feel because God already knows how we feel and we feel and many times he's just waiting on us to say God this is Esther or this is Tracy this is Anike this is Jeremy this is Oliver this is Jennifer God this is how I feel but how many of us maintain such a true relationship with God where at any point in time we can go and say, God, this is how I feel. I'm weak. I'm broken. I'm fragile. Everything is going against how we planned it. Nothing seems to be adding up. Nothing is lining up. God, I, I just don't know. I just don't. And so Jesus found himself. In a position where that, that's how he felt. He was sorrowful. The man said he felt sorrowful unto death. But that's not even the part that I want to highlight to you this morning. Later on in the scripture, we see where the one who betrayed Jesus. And you can find that in verse, starting at verse 47 in St. Matthew chapter 26. The one that betrays Jesus comes to betray him. Right? And not only does he betray him, but because his disciples are disheartened about the entire situation, they deal with the matter violently and Jesus had to intervene. Earlier in the passage of scripture, he says that he felt sorrowful even unto death. He said, he said that he felt very heavy. But what blessed my heart is verse 53. He said, thinkest thou that i cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels 
But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? I'm going to read that again. And I want you to read it with me as well. 53 and 54. Thinkest thou not that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So my question to you this morning. If you were supposed to be magically pulled out of the rot or the tribulation or the trial or the persecution or the criticism, the rejection, the supposed failure that you think you're facing and is killing you, how is the prophetic word that has been released over your life going to be fulfilled? How does the vision or the dream or the passion that God placed inside of you going to come to pass? In other words, what I want to encourage you today and let you know is that everything that you're going through is for a reason. It may not feel like it. And in your heart and in your mind, you may be saying, okay, God, well, if that's the pain that I have to endure, then God choose somebody else. But why not you? Why not you? It doesn't matter how you feel. Even if you feel like you're going to die, you're not going to die. Why you're not going to die? Because purpose must be fulfilled. The word of God says that not even one word that comes out of his mouth shall return unto him void he makes reference to rain and he says as the rain descends from the heaven and cannot be returned just so is his word that goeth forth the prophetic words that have been released over you the dreams you've had the business ideas you've had the vision the passion everything that's inside of you is the reason why you're going through what you're going through and also think about this it's not just for you alone but it's for the people that you're connected to the people whose lives you're supposed to speak over the people who you're supposed to bless the people who you're supposed to give to the people who you're supposed to invest in the people who you're supposed to edify that's why you're going through what you're going through you think jesus went through all that he went through just for him he went through this for you and for me that's why we're here that's why we can pray for strength and peace and grace and comfort through all that we go through. So I want you to think about this before you decide to give up this week. I want you to think about this when you feel as though your back is against the wall and you have no one to encourage you, no one to speak over you. You feel like, God, I'm failing. You feel like you're literally sinking and there's no one to pull you up even though you're crying out at the top of your voice. Do not give up do not give in jesus healed the sick have you healed any sick jesus raised the dead have you raised any dead in your lifetime yet still he went through he was persecuted and if he could go through it you can go through it too and he, it's not just the case where he went through it but he came out victorious he came out on the other side at the other side of your pain, on the other side of your tribulation, on the other side of your fear, look, God is going to bless you and you will be rewarded. Sooner or later, you're going to find out why you had to go through everything you went through. You're going to find out why you have to go through everything you're going through. I know it hurts. I know it pains. I know it allows you to question yourself, even question your abilities sometimes. Sometimes you're forced to look back and see, okay, where did I mess up? Where did I go wrong? What did I do? And it's not what you've done. But it's because of who you are and what you carry. If you didn't carry anything valuable, if you didn't carry anything substantial, if the purpose within you did not serve a greater good than just existing to have a job, pay bills, get married and have children, then you would not have been going through what you're going through right now and so i want you to count it a privilege and an honor to be able to go through what you're going through right now because you're coming up with a testimony you're coming up with a testimony so powerful 
but the only way you can come out with that powerful testimony is having to endure you may be feeling stretched you may be feeling like god i don't know when how why but trust in his word that doesn't fail trust it everything that he's ever promised you is going to come to pass it has to come to pass every last one of them so god bless you i love you and be encouraged be encouraged be encouraged everything that you're going through serves a purpose serves a greater good so the scripture in Matthew chapter 26 and by the way you can just read all of it from verse 1 right down to verse 75 so be blessed God love you and have a fabulous week